Night Swamp Rebellion podcast featuring Team Money of Smoke. This is the basis of art. So, what was your weirdest uh, request that you could remember? Like, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Which gig was this? Um, it was not uh, any of mine. Church summer camp. <laughs> Uh, 2003. Yeah. Yeah. That was the pastor. How to, um, I don't want to know how it turned out. It's fine. You're, you're well-rounded. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's called closure, boo. Boo. Oh, man. I felt like I had such a release just now of information. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but seriously, what's the weirdest shit you've ever, you know, ever, what's the weirdest song somebody's ever requested? I would have to think about that for a while because a lot of gigs I am, uh, you know, wasted <laughs> by that point. Or before you start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the requests don't usually start that early. It's, it's always the ones that come up to you. I was, I remember playing in just one more, the biker bar on mm-hmm. the buy sign. I love that little place. And I said, I've been there, and it was like a Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. They call me like, hey, our, our, uh, our acoustic person can't come out and play. She broke her hand masturbating or something. Can you come out and do a little gig for a couple hours? We'll give you like 50 bucks on a bar tab. Was it to masturbate her because she broke her hand? Or to play? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Absolutely not. Okay. Not even, with the, not even with the guitar. So I'm in there. I'm chucking away at the shit, you know, doing my thing. And this bitch walks up, and she's like, hey. You know Fly Away by Captain Gage and the Shank Shark Shooters? <laughs> I'm like, what? What the fuck you talking about? Can you say those words again? That was cool. And she said, <laughs> do you know Fly Away by Captain Gage and the Shank Shark Shooters? Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You don't know that. You, so- you need to learn that song. <laughs> Your voice would be perfect for it. I went to school with Ronnie Van Zant of Leonard Scanner's cousin. I'm like, I still don't even understand what the fuck you're talking about. But it's when they ask for that random song that nobody's ever heard of, you know? Captain it's like, Geach in the Schweider? <laughs> Is that a real thing? I don't know. That's what she's. I, I, that's what I heard. If it's not a real thing, I want that name. That's a good You can have name. it. Okay. I'm just saying they do stuff like that. I'll it's weird. It. Especially I'll when you're playing like an acoustic gig. Because they'll come up with all these obscure things like... Um, uh, you ever heard of um, <clears throat> so-and-so's first album they ever wrote before they were this person? I'm like, no. God damn. And I was in my late 20s at that time also, right? So if it wasn't something that was kind of newer, I didn't know it. I'd play like some old deep cut Leonard uh, Skinner uh, covers and shit like that blues all that shit up. But I didn't really know a whole lot of music. I knew about 300 covers across the board from, like, probably 1975 to current day at that time. Mm-hmm. But they would ask all this weird shit, you know? I don't know that fucking shit. Captain Geach and the Shank Shark Shooters? What the fuck is that? <laughs> it sounds like an awesome band. Your voice would be perfect for it. Like, all right, baby. It's like, I just made it up. I'm like, your tooth looks like a hash brown. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> you got a big one in the front. It looks like a McDonald's hash brown. Boom, right there in your mouth. I do know that. And I was d- dumb too, because I was young, and I and I thought I thought it'd be funny to say, "Thank you. I'm gonna take a little break, just so you know. I play for uh, beers, tips, and tits." And then all of a sudden, the old bike rags woo, start pulling them old floppers, and I'm like, "Oh, sh- I shouldn't have said that." I learned real quick. Stop saying that. I play for beers and tips. That's it. <laughs> All right. Our cocaine. That, uh, that helps. Yeah. yeah. That makes the tits better. I, I kind of miss playing gigs like that, though. Like, especially those, like, afternoon gigs. It's just so laid back. Dude, you, you see know? some shit doing that. Oh, yeah. And then, like, the the woman comes in and grabs the old coon ass man who's been sitting there since before she went to mass this morning. And comes. Every single bar has got one, too. Is the old man sitting there while the old lady was at mass doing the Catholic thing. She's going to come running him out of it. But you coming home, you son of a bitch. Man. He's like, no, I'm not. Don't you talk back in front of these people. I'll lay you out on the fucking floor. <laughs> and then she goes dragging his ass out. And you're sitting there just, hey, hey, where <laughs> do we go? You know, just going at it. 
Did you ever like kind of change up lyrics and just kind of talk about what's happening in front of you? Because I could feel like that's something you would do. I did that a lot at certain places because the, I knew at certain places they wasn't they didn't care. All they wanted was background noise. So there are places like that. So I'd just be like, the lady over there is eating a breadstick and it looks like she's sucking a dick. Oh, 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 oh. And, Olive the, Garden's and the panties drop. <laughs> Olive Garden's a great place to play. And then they hit the slots. Yeah. Yeah. So. Do you get soup with that? Yeah. Souped. <laughs> you get soup with that. Nice. <laughs> Super soaker. <laughs> um, the casinos are cool, though. Cause, uh, but that was a set list. That was like, hey, we play these songs. Um, I, I couldn't sing a lot of the songs in the set list. I couldn't do them. Yeah, so you- I would sit in the back with the tambourine and just like play with my nipples or do some weird shit or dance. Or I would sing backup vocals, just kind of like sing ah, to the mic. The multi-purpose. But like when we don't stop, bully. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm going to the bar. <laughs> I'll do that shit. You know, but we've sang shit like uh, Buck Cherry because that was popular at the time. Uh, I don't know. Toby Keith. I love this bar. You know, we do that dumb shit. Mm-hmm. But that's what they wanted to hear. And that was the set list that they would give you. You don't, you can't waver from that. It's even when you, I never played on a cruise ship, but I know people that have. Same thing. They give you like this 400 song set list. Oh, it's specific. And they say, know this. Yeah. I don't care how you do it. It can be your way, but know it. You have to know 250 covers to even audition right off the top. And, from- not, and not kind of know them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not kind of know them. You and- better fuck. Bro, when you see cruise yeah. ship musicians, they're they- amazing. They are really good, man. I saw a five piece Asian band, all Korean. Literally playing, and they all and they literally had the accent and everything. But when they were singing, they sounded like I mean, just the creamiest, most beautiful. It was a voices. Beatles cover band. It was a Beatles cover and I've band. I've seen them too. They're amazing, and bro. They are fucking phenomenal. Because like when they'd start talking with each other between like songs yeah, and like, stuff. I want to hold your head. It's like what just the fuck just happened. It's like exactly like that the Jamaican Beatles were weed. From. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> that was the cruise I seen them on. Yeah. Yeah, they were killer. Yeah. But that that's like your uh, the opposite of when what you're saying is whenever a cover band makes it their own, they literally are their own and they made the cover exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's even crazier. Yeah, I, you can go see certain cover bands and uh uh, they'll, you know that the solos come you're like man I hope he hits the solo but then you see that dude that's like man fuck that solo I'm going rogue yeah and I'm gonna shred this bitch mm-hmm. I'm gonna play the parts that like, people oh. know and then I'm gonna take this fucker over yeah and that's when I'm like oh and that's what kind of like made me think to try the cover band stuff cause I mean like it is good money it is and especially weddings and shit like it's fun It's yeah especially weddings but it's exhausting. It really is. I man. can imagine. Yeah, that's a long. And night. it's a lot of. And it's a lot of PR. Like you, you, those bands that that are that were big back in the day. I don't know if they even around anymore. But like sold out, right? They, mm-hmm. they that was a big wedding band. They were. I forget who else was a band like that. But those guys, um, they they were people. People like the crowd was. They they knew how to interact with the crowd. And they never tired. If you went see them downtown Thibodeau and they started a gig at 10 o'clock at night and they played till 3 o'clock in the morning, they never wore out. Endurance run. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And they would do it night after night. Bourbon Street, same thing, night after night after night. That, so imagine <laughs> the I'll, energy of Nong New is the same thing, and people think I just ha- I have a hard on for these guys, but it's true. From the time they 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 play the first note to the last beat, it's it's energy filled from beginning to end. Dude, think of being conditioned like that six years every day on Bourbon Street, like Tim. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, Tim's a beast. Tim's a beast. He paid his dues. Rick from Rick Flavored Arsenal, come on the Dank Swamp Rebellion. I love you, dude. Are you going to call him Rick Flavored Arsenal? Like, yeah. <laughs> I just don't like... I don't like... <laughs> so is your last name Flavored Arsenal? 
This is Grovon Mayer from the Dank Swamp Rebellion podcast reminding you to stock up on your Elmer's Chewies. Um, uh, get you some of that. No, I'll tell you, the original's good, man. The original's real good. I uh, like me the barbecue one. I like the, uh, man, the, the taco one. Bro, I, I, I dip that in some ranch meat. Uh, they got the hot and spicy. They got the pizza. The pizza one's real, real good, man. And so is the green onion. And if you like a little something sweet after, get you some of that caramel popcorn. They ain't, uh, they ain't sleeping on that, uh, that caramel popcorn, now. And uh, remember, if it ain't Elmer, it ain't Chewy. Elmer's quality snacks since 1946. Some guess. colors. Yeah. Colors. We're going to get some colors in there. Yeah. yeah I'm going to get you some colors, babe. Yeah. yeah. Right. But why is it that when they get you the dollar store colors, oh, they just wasn't as colored? No. No, nah, not that rose art bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta, be rose art. Gotta be Crayola. Gotta be Crayola, bro. Crayola straight That's up. That's the good shit. And I felt good going to school because I had the big um, 500 box of them. Oh, you a gross yeah, bro. Oh, bro, <laughs> to the fucking fullest, to the gills. <laughs> but the thing was this. I had two shades of white in me. I, I, bro, I had a white, an off-white, an eggshell, and a light tan. <laughs> <laughs> Puff bed, that's nice. But I had no artistic ability whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so you rented them bitches out? <laughs> No worse. So I was all like uh, booty flayed about it, and I was fla- flaunting my three hundred pack of crayons and uh, my colors, as you should. Which also had um, the two um, the pencil sharpeners in the box, but it had two because it had one for the big colors <laughs> and for the small colors. Because it was so the Cadillac. Of Bro, colors. I'm telling you. But it was also. 1987 and 1988, somewhere around there. 1986, I don't know. Yeah. I'm probably four or six years old. And cardboard was shit back then. They didn't know how to make shit. So the boxes, everything was stuck. So my my mom and my mama and my grandma, you know, they my, my granny, they put the, uh, the, the crayons, the colors in my bag. And I get to school. And by the time I got there from being on the bus, like sitting on my bag, you know, the bu- everything was cracked and all busted the shit. <laughs> So it didn't really matter. But here you got all these assholes running around with like the little 10 pack, you know, for 99 cents or the 24 pack. Mm-hmm. And me. I'm like, bro, you doing better than me. You st- bro, that 10 pack of colors would last them assholes a whole year. And you had 500. And I had 500 broken ones in my backpack the first fucking day. Did that scar you? It did. It looks like it could. It did. Because now I purposely color. Like if I'm at Applebee's, I make sure I get colors. But I, I purposely draw outside the line. Sir, this is not a tablecloth. It's weird because I won't, like the picture part of it, I won't I won't color that. Oh. I color everything outside of it, like the table and everything else. <laughs> My meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said you, you, you had uh, tried a color once. I did. Yeah. I ate quite a few. What color? <laughs> um, it was, it, obviously it was purple. I thought it was going to taste like grape. It did not. Um... People are going to say this is not funny, um, but fuck, man, laugh, dude. Who cares? Like, he, he thought it was funny in time, but I used to work at a psych unit, and there was this old man, and uh, he's de- he's actually dead now. I do know that much because I did keep up with him, but he was a dementia patient, and I and I, I literally, when I was on shift, um, me and this guy, Calvin, shout out to Calvin, awesome partner of mine. We worked together for a long time. Great musician also. Um, but we would, we would just take care of this old cat, you know? And, um, one day we in the, in the chow room and we feeding everybody and we look over and there's Chinese food that they made that the, the, the ladies in the kitchen actually made. There was like different, you know, menus every day. They got to feed them. So they would try and spice up. So they made up some fried rice and egg, you know, egg yeah. roll shit like that. Nice. And I look over, and even though in all his dementia and everything, he didn't know where he was. He had all these wild stories he would tell us. And that was the best part about him, <clears throat> is that people didn't realize if they just sat down with him, he just wanted to be occupied. Mm-hmm. So I just let him tell me all these wild stories. And he told me that he was a horse wrangler one time, and that a man owed him $7,000 for training this horse. And so the guy didn't pay up on it, on the money. So he went back to the man. And he took the training back from the horse, and the horse never listened to the man again. 
Wow. So he's wow. sitting there. Wow, that's amazing. And the Chinese food is on the table. And he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out two colors, crayons, what have you, and puts them in his fingers perfectly like a pair of chopsticks. And he picks up the rice with the colors. He knew that that Chinese food needed chopsticks. And then he bit into those colors. <laughs> <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. The flashback. <laughs> and <laughs> fuck. At the time, bro. <laughs> wait. At the time. I I couldn't do anything but laugh. Because yeah. it I just mean, shocked me, right? Uh, you, and then everybody else started laughing. No one's ready to see and that. And then when it, he realized that everybody was laughing, he looked up and he gave us this big smile and he had all this red and green <laughs> colors in his teeth. <laughs> little pieces. And it was all and he was just chomping away and just happy as shit. And we're like, you know, it's just a little wax. His poo's gonna I'm I'm the one's gonna have to wipe him. It's you yeah. know, I'm gonna have to wipe him. This He's got confetti turds. This isn't the end of this. I've been journey. wiping his ass for a year now. Like what's another fucking day, right? At least it looks a little You know. Different. And I took care of that dude like the whole time and it was um but he said the same thing. I was like, Them crayons are good and he's like, Not really. He knew that, but you know, we didn't have any chopsticks for him, so he just improvised. Fuck it. You know what's interesting is being able to take back training that you've implemented. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's a horse whisperer. He took that horse's will from him to where he would never run a race again. You could say he was absolutely a horse wrangler if he did that. In every Which, sense of the word. The owner of that horse went on to hang himself. Now, he didn't tell me this. I found this out later that it was all true. Um, I did a little research. But... Um, yeah, the owner of the horse was so saddened by the horse just being disengaged and wouldn't, wouldn't obey commands anymore that he just finally hung himself in a, in a persimmon tree. The horse or the owner? Both. Oh. They hung themselves together, just defeated. Damn, man. Yeah. The men just crazy. Rest in peace, mister. <laughs> T-Money, thank you so much for coming hang out with us tonight, my man. It's been super cool. You're welcome back anytime. Welcome to the Thanks One for Belly. And you are definitely part of the uh, the crew now. And uh, we're just, uh, bro, we're, we're ready to go see some live music. We're going to go check you out, smoke. And um, Cool Whip. And Cool Whip. Yeah, the Cool Whips. <laughs> the Cool Whip. Get it right. Get it right. Get it tight. Um,. But where can we find um, your music, man? Let us let them know where you're at. All right. So my band Smoke, we are on Spotify. You can type in uh, Smoke and find a hundred other artists with that name. Or you can just type in the name of the EP, which is called Stoned to Death. <laughs> Check us out this Saturday, June 19th for the Smoke Show at the Intracoastal Club of Harlem.